the Planning Commission. Uh, today is Monday, April 10th. My name is Alyssa Olson, and I'm the president of the Planning Commission. The city will be recording and posting this meeting to the city's website and YouTube channel as a means of increasing public access and transparency. This meeting is public and subject to the Minnesota Open Meeting Law. At this time, I will ask the clerk to please call the roll. Commissioner Abdi. Us absent. Commissioner Alper. Present. Commissioner Baxley. Here. Commissioner Campbell. Here. Commissioner Conley. Present. Commissioner Ford. Here. Commissioner Koski. Present. Commissioner Marwa. Here. Commissioner Meyer is absent. Chair Olson. Here. That's nine members present. All right, we have a quorum, so with that we'll proceed to the agenda, a copy of which was posted for public access to the city's legislative information management system, which is available at limbs.minneapolismn.gov. There's also uh, copies over by the clerk. Um, we'll begin with acceptance of the minutes from March 20th. Could I have a motion to accept the minutes? All right, we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? All right, that motion passes. The minutes are adopted. Uh, before we organize our agenda this evening, um, staff have some additional items for us to consider. So I'd like to, um, do you want to say anything about them, Jim, or I'll go ahead. Okay. <laughs> um, there are is it three addendum items um, that were approved at the Committee of the Whole that normally um, would be pushed on to us and we would approve without discussion. They did not get um, pushed through, so we are adding them. Um, we're adding them now. Um, and we'll add, we will talk about those um, when I go through the agenda. Thank you. All right. Um, so, our next order of business is to organize the public hearing agenda, um, which again is available at limbs.minneapolismn.gov. Um, I'm gonna read through all of the items on the agenda and I'm gonna state whether they're slated for consent, discussion, or continuance. Um, if, you, if you agree with the staff recommendation and any stated conditions on the item, you don't need to do anything and the board uh, will pass them without discussion. Um, if you would like to speak on an item against the staff recommendation, when I call out that item, just raise your hand and we'll put that item on our discussion agenda. So uh, with that, we have the following items on the agenda for this evening. Uh, item number four is 1714 East Hennepin Avenue. Staff is recommending this item for consent. Is there anyone here who would like to speak against staff recommendation on item number four? Okay, we'll put item number four on our discussion agenda. Item number five is 651 Nicollet Mall. Staff is recommending this item for consent. Is there anyone here who would like to speak against staff recommendation on item number five? Okay, seeing none, I'll put item five on consent. Item number six is 2426 Inglewood Ave. Staff is recommending this item for consent. Is there anyone here who would like to speak against staff recommendation on item six? Okay, we will put item six on our discussion. Item number seven is 560 Humboldt Avenue North, formerly 465 Gerard Terrace. Uh, staff is recommending this item for consent. Is there anyone here who would like to speak on item number seven? Okay, we'll put item number seven on consent. Item number eight, uh, public alley adjacent to 2840 Chicago Avenue. Staff is recommending this item for consent. Is there anyone here to speak against staff recommendation on item number eight? Okay, we'll put eight on our consent. Uh, item nine is, is 600 Park Avenue. This item will be continued to the May 8th meeting. Item number 10 is 13746 Street West. Staff is recommending this item for consent. Is there anyone here who would like to speak against staff, rec staff recommendation on item 10? Okay, put item 10 on our discussion. Item 11 is 3745 Hiawatha Avenue. Staff is recommending this item for consent. Is there any anyone here to speak against staff recommendation on item 11? All right, seeing none, we'll put item 11 on consent. 
The, we also have the three addendum items. So those will be items 12, 13, and 14. Um, not, none of these items will have a public hearing. Um, number 12 is 1823 and 1839 Bryant Avenue North. Um, staff is recommending this item for consent. Item number 13 is uh, 1301 West Lake TIF Plan. Uh, staff is recommending this item for consent. And item number 14. Sorry, say that again. 1301 West Lake TIF Plan. Uh, and then item number 14 is Plymouth Avenue Apartments TIF Plan, and this item is recommended for consent. So to review, uh, we have items 5, 7, 8, 11, 12, 13, and 14 on consent. And we have items 4, 6, and 10 on our discussion agenda. And we will continue item number 9 to the May 8th meeting. Could I have a motion to approve the agenda as amended? So moved. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstentions? All right, that motion passes and the agenda has been adopted. So we'll move um, right into our consent agenda. Uh, first, we'll vote on the consent items on the agenda that don't have a public hearing. So those are items um, 12, 13, and 14. Do we need to do these separately? The I don't no? think so, no. Okay, that's my mistake. We'll do the full consent agenda, which is 5, 7, 8. My apologies, oh, Chair Olson, I misspoke. <laughs> I thought you meant, did we need to do the addendum items separately from one another? Oh, because um, But because the addendum items don't have a public hearing, just for clarity, we okay. recommend doing them separately. Thank okay. you for the question. Thank you. Okay, so um, we'll move on and we'll vote on the consent items that do not have a public hearing. So items 12, 13, and 14. Could I have a motion to adopt items 12, 13, and 14 on consent? So moved. All right, we have a motion and a second. Uh, is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? All right, those items have passed, so 12, 13, and 14 are done for today. Um, so next we'll proceed to handle the public hearing um, for the consent agenda for items five, seven, eight, and 11. So I'll open the public hearing and if there's anyone here who would like to speak on items five, seven, eight, or 11, you can come to the podium now, state your name and address for the record and proceed with your comments. All right, seeing that. Uh, for, are you wanting to speak on items five, seven, eight, or 11? Okay, great. <laughs> All right, seeing none, I will close the public hearing for the consent agenda. Um, could I have a motion to adopt items five, seven, eight, and 11 on consent? Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstentions? All right. Items 5, 7, 8, and 11 have also been approved. Next, we will move on to our one item that is continued, um, item number 9. Um, commissioners, could I have a motion to continue item 9 to the May 8th meeting? So moved. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstentions? All right, item nine will be heard at the May 8th meeting. So we'll now move on to our discussion items. And our first item is number four, 1714 East Hennepin Avenue. And um, it looks like staff is Hillary Dvork. Good afternoon, commissioners, and I apologize. I've been in training this afternoon, and I'm feeling a little unprepared for this presentation, but I'm going to give it a shot. 
Uh, this is an application for 1714 East Hennepin Avenue. Uh, the subject site is located at the southwest corner of Hennepin Avenue and 18th Avenue Southeast. Um, the site is guided for corridor four and neighborhood mixed use. The site does have split zoning uh, with R4 and R1A. This is what, the site qualifies for the exemption in um, the zoning code that allows um, the larger percentage of zoning to cover the entire site. So the site was analyzed using the R4 zoning requirements. Um, the site is just one, about one third of an acre, a little over 13,000 square feet. Uh, the site is shaped like a flag <laughs> with property lines extending into the right of way with right-of-way easements over those portions of the lot outside of what looks like the public sidewalk. And so only the area not covered by those easements was included for the land um, use evaluation. So that is the site, and you can see this is the, the easements come out to here, but obviously there are, the property lines go to the middle of the streets, but this land was not included in the site area because it does have right-of-way um, public transportation easements over it. And the development proposal is for a four-story residential building with 27 dwelling units and 23 off-street parking spaces. The only application before you today is for site plan review for the new building. There was an administrative FAR increase application considered in the application, and they do qualify for the premium. The premium that they are applying for is the enclosed parking, and we have conditioned the site plan review accordingly. Um, there are limited number of balconies on the west, north, and south sides of the building. I'm just going to go back to the site plan. Um, for alternative compliance, there are four items that need alternative compliance. One is blank walls. Actually, I'm going to go down. It's on the first floor of the building along the parking garage walls. So here and here, these areas of the building are over 25 feet in length and blank. We have condition that they add windows into those locations to not have blank wall conditions. Ground floor active um, functions. The plan on the right side is the first floor plan. The areas in blue are the active functions. Gray is dedicated to parking and internal uh, circulation. We are recommending alternative compliance due to the unique property lines and need to accommodate parking and circulation within the building. Staff has conditioned uh, providing the fenestration pattern on the north building wall is shown on submitted elevation. So we want to ensure that these windows along Hennepin Avenue are, excuse me, that's not the right elevation. These, these windows along Hennepin Avenue are provided. Um, they also have um, alternative compliance needed for the parking garage conditions, which are the same as the ground floor active functions. And then for the canopy trees, um, they are short on canopy trees and we are conditioning that they meet the canopy tree requirement. So we are recommending approval of the application with the stated conditions on, um, or within your staff packets and within the agenda and I will stand for any questions. Thank you, Hillary. Commissioners, are there any? Any questions for staff before we move on? All right, I'm not seeing any, thank you. Um, I will open the public hearing and invite the applicant to come forward. Um, when the applicant's done, we will uh, open the public hearing to the residents, um, and we are gonna be using a two-minute timer this evening, so um, please try to keep your comments to two minutes, and um, yeah, thank you, you can go ahead. Uh, good evening, Commissioner. My, my name is Pete Keeley, Collage Architects uh, with the applicant. And I don't have a whole lot to say, so I'll be here to answer questions. I do want to point out a couple things about the site that may be a little bit unique. One, it was an old gas station site. Uh, we are going through uh, remediation on the site, so there's an application in through deed to do the environmental remediation on that. Because of that, we will be doing some excavation on the site. Um, that's one. Number two, which may come up in a little bit, that uh, the lot actually has a leg way to the west on it. It's a very narrow thing. We're not 100% sure um, regarding the ownership of the fence that sits on this little bit of a flag area. Um, we believe it was built at the time that the site was lowered for uh, Minda as they put the road in and the um, underpass under the train. Um, so we are trying to work with the site. Um, got the active uses on the front. Everything else is kind of per um, Per, per the standards, and we're really not looking for anything other than site plan approval and no variances. So 
with that, I'd be happy to open up to any questions that anybody might have and maybe answer questions later. Thank you. Uh, commissioners, any questions for the applicant? I'm not seeing any. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, if there are any residents here who would like to come forward and speak on this item, you can come to the podium now. Um, you can state your name and address for the record and proceed with your comments. Good afternoon. My name is Jeff Haber, H-A-B-E-R-E-R, -E -E -R, and I live at 11127 17th Avenue Southeast in Minneapolis. It abuts the back, the west end of the property, and uh, I have about, well, I hope I have about five points to make, so I'll just try to be clear with what I'm trying to say. Um, the first point I want to make is um, I don't have much grinding to stand on, I realize, but I'm not, I'm opposed to all this density that's going on in the city, and this is another example of it. Yes, it's in, it, it literally is in my backyard where the density is going on, but this is a university area, and the university area, as maybe you know, maybe you don't know, we have lots of students in the area, we have lots of issues with um, livability issues from time to time, and just to increase more density just means more and more of that. We see it in Dinky Town. Uh, all over the place now, uh, huge densities. I, I just feel compelled to at least put out a resident's viewpoint that this density is, it's hurting this neighborhood. It really is hurting this neighborhood. And I don't know what the intent is of this property, whether it's intended for general use or for students, but if we have more students in this in this type of dense areas, our, our neighborhood is is gonna further deteriorate in terms of the livability. So that's my first point around density. Um, secondly, um, it relates to uh, the, the concern about uh, the excavation that might be done because of the, it was an old gas station. And I, I wasn't around at the time, but I've, I've lived at the uh, um, adjacent property since uh, 1988, I believe that was when I, we, we uh, purchased the property. Um, so the street was widened and there's, there is the, um, um, concern about this is an old peat bog. This whole neighborhood in southeast Minneapolis is a peat bog, essentially. And if you don't build down to the sand, you're going to have problems, structural problems with the house. There's also is a big railroad crossing track, track there that happens um, um, just across the street that vibrates. You can feel it every time a train goes by, and the trains are free, very frequent. It's a Burlington Northern line. So the concern is about ground stability and digging down deeper. Um, I, I don't have any structural analysis to show you that it's, it's a problem, but I know it is a problem in my house. I know that, that my, in my own house, um, the foundation is, Could the you ground keeps wrap dropping wrap up your down. comments, please? I'm sorry? Could you please wrap up your comments? Am I only allowed a certain time? Yep, two minutes. We have the timer. Um, okay, finish, I, wasn't, finish I wasn't aware of this when you, you, you asked me to come speak. Okay, could you just wrap up your comments that you have, maybe make the, the biggest point? Okay, I'm concerned about stability. That's, that was my second point. I'm also concerned about this fence that's this, on this flag part. I want that fence to stay there. That, that brought to my property. It's what keeps my backyard up. If that goes, I have a big problem with my property. And I'll be coming to, if, if that goes, I will be coming to find out how we resolve this. Um, that's three. Number fourth one was, um, I think referred to in terms of uh, the um, landscaping issues, there needs to be another tree, at least a shade tree. I wanna make sure that happens. Um, and there is there is no lighting plan. I wanna see what that lighting plan looks like. It's not flooding my backyard uh, with, with lighting. Um, I think that there's also a fence on the, the west side of the property that I have another neighbor that also is concerned about that continuance of that fence. If we could, it needs to be repaired and it would be great if we could work with the new owners to um, repair that fence. So I think that's, that's my point, was um, density, um, stability, um, landscape issues, um, the lighting, and then fencing. Okay, thank you for your comments. Is there anyone else here who would like to speak on this item? State your name and the address for the record, please. Hello, my name is Helen Torrens. T-O-R-R-E-N-S, and I live at 1112 17th Avenue Southeast, which um, would be looking right over this um, development. And um, I, I 
have the same concerns as, as Jeff who just talked. And um, one of my big concerns is because of the peat soil. So the reason it vibrates and shakes is because the peat soil is kind of a, it's kind of like a jelly. It's, um, and it goes down pretty far to about four or five feet. And so it shakes things and there's, and so when the trains go by, so there's this, um, I don't know what all the scientific name for it is, but basically it's like a resonance and um, really concerned about pile driving during construction and how that might damage. All the homes are over 100 years old, um, all three that will be the most impacted. And I want to make sure there's, that, that people understand with there's excavation that this needs to be addressed. Um, and also I, I second that we need to figure out about the fence and what it really want to answer what's going to happen with the fence and um, the landscaping and lighting plan. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak on this item? All right. Seeing none, I will close the public hearing for this item. Um, commissioners, uh, Commissioner Conley? I do. I have a question um, for the developer or owner. Um, just uh, how do we not know who owns the fence? Uh, right now, the fence is scheduled to, to remain. There's, there's no plan to take that fence down. Uh, it is, here's, here's the issue as I see it. Um, the fence sits on the property of this, of this property. I believe it was built by MnDOT. Um, there is a, I think there's a legal statute because it's been, in, been there for a long time, maybe 50 years. I checked the 1988 aerial and it was in place on the 88 aerial. So I believe it's called adverse possession. So I don't know. When I look at the civil survey and I see this, the fence, it is on this particular property. As to are there other legal instances where it might be the ownership of someone else? Maybe. That's, I just want to put that caveat out there. As it sits right now, we don't have a plan to take that down. The plan is to keep that remaining. Thank you for the clarification. And then if I may, um, is it in a, a state of disrepair, considering the age of yeah, it? Yeah, I, I, I think it looks pretty good. I have not seen the neighbor's side of the fence. We haven't gone back there. Um, that, so, that fence has been, I would say, there's been some graffiti on that fence. There's been um, some, um, some repairs to that. There are a few areas that probably could use a little bit of repair to it. Um, I don't think it's structurally, it looks sound to me. Um, but I think there are some areas where it could use a little touch up. So then that would just lead me to the final question that if, if it's on this particular property, mm -hmm. that would the onus be on you then yes. to take care of any minor repairs, paints that might need, be needed to, if, it's if our there's wall, no plan it's to our, take it down. If it's our wall, it's our issue, yeah. That's right, so thank you. All right, commissioners, any other comments or would anyone like to make a motion? Commissioner Marwa. I have a question for the applicant I, or staff, I'm not sure, um, about the alternative compliance for the blank wall, the windows on the parking garage side. Mm -hmm. What, sorry, what, is there a, is that staff is okay now that there's the windows? Can you just kind of explain what happened with that? I'm trying to follow it in the packet. We, oh, excuse me. Uh, the condition is that these windows that are shown on here remain. So if there's any changes internally to the garage or the bike storage area, that those windows would not be eliminated. For in the future, if that space were to be converted to something else, you know, if the parking were to go away and it were to be converted, that we would have that those windows providing that um, those views to and from the street and seen into that active function space. So that is the purpose of the condition is to make sure that when the final plans come in that these windows along Hennepin Avenue, and I don't know if you can see the cursor, but those windows on the ground floor that, they're, that they <clears throat> remain, excuse me, in the final plans. Sorry, I mean, um, so the, the, in the bottom photo, the one that you're showing, that's, those are the addition that the developer put in. 
These are the plans that were oh, submitted and that we reviewed. So this is the elevation along Hennepin, and this you can see them here. Okay. So we're just conditioning that they remain. Okay. And then the side that had the blank wall that was larger than 25 feet was? These are facing your west and south property lines. Um, and so what we've con done is condition that they not have blank walls and simple what seems like a simple solution would be to add a window, to just follow the window patterning down and put a window in here so we don't have a blank wall over 25 feet. Same within this area of the building. Okay, and but that faces kind of the neighbors behind them, behind this building, right? It's not the side that faces kind of in. Correct. Okay. Okay, then I don't, I'm fine with it. Thank you. Hillary, could you just uh, go over... Um for the neighbors concerned about construction activities, what is the process um, once that is underway for them to check in and be assured that their property is going to be all right? I'm sorry, could you ask, ask the question one more time, Commissioner Baxley? What, assurance, what, what is the city process in terms of inspection or review or compliance with uh, construction activities so it doesn't disturb neighbors? Uh, that's a very good question, and I'm... <laughs> Um, I believe, is, and Mr. maybe uh, the applicant knows this just given how many developments he has done in the city. Would you like to answer this, Mr. Keeley? Or I mean, there, there's some concern there, and if there are I know concerns we have a process by the neighbors place, during construction, right. I would encourage them to call the city's 311 line and get in contact with the city about construction concerns. Okay. Um, but, you know, there are hours of operation that construction activities can happen. There are noise restrictions. Um, and so within those hours, you know, the construction crews, construction crew, excuse me, or the development team can be out there doing that work. Yeah, um, I think it's obviously by right we can build this. It's more what awarenesses can the developer play. This is our methodology. This is how it's probably going to vibrate the ground or not or just, just some... I will More let, information. Yep, I'll let the developer um, speak to that. There is no um, underground parking, so this is slab on grade, and so there should be less uh, disruption given that they aren't excavating 10 to 12 feet down. But I will let um, Mr. Keeley fully Thanks, answer. Hillary. Yep. Thanks. Um, yeah, one of the reasons we didn't go down was the conditions of the soil. Mm -hmm. So we're essentially excavating to do the environmental remediation, take out the bad soil from the leaky tanks. And then we're doing engineered fill on the underside of that. So we're going um, essentially to get a good chunk of that peat out of there. And then we're doing some mixing of that to provide suitable soils underneath. We've done geotech on that. Um, we're comfortable with the, that solution that it's actually going to be pretty sound. Uh, one of the advantages of not going deep for the foundation um, is less, less impact overall, although there will be some excavation. Fortunately, we do have to go pretty close to the property lines to get our slopes um, back in order to kind of retain the stability of it. Uh, as we get into that, we will certainly, that will be short if there's an, an issue. Uh, we take, there's photographs that are taken, there's documentation of the conditions, the existing site conditions, so we know what happened um, uh, before all the construction started so that as it comes back, if there's a concern, um, then we know the, the starting point and we know uh, essentially what would have happened during construction. So those are kind of the basic basic um, items. I would say also, you know, there's an on-site, there'll be an on-site uh, job supervisor uh, that can be contact and there's a lot of construction coordination that happens uh, through that time, but we will set up a contact point for that. I know we have a, a, a neighborhood meeting come up, coming up and we'll uh, explain a little bit more about that, but essentially we have through the a construction company there will be a contact pretty much at all times in case concerns come up whether it's whatever the case may be so. i appreciate that do you know what construction methodology you're using for the is it going to be piles or is it a spread footing do you know yet no we can do spread footings okay. um, once we go in and we do the remediation and then we kind of bring back the uh, sufficient soils that can all be done on spread footings it's actually a pretty lightweight building without the parking underneath it it's it'll fit on the soils just fine great thanks um, Albert and then Campbell. Thanks. I just have a point of a question that is lingering in my mind for, for, for you, please. Um, a point of curiosity really is why, what, what do you gain, this, um, 
from keeping that little tail? Or is there any reason you're... The, the fence seems like such an issue. I'm, I mean, it just easier that way to... Well... Why would you plan on... kind of... Oh. Yeah, go ahead, please. It kind of came with the site, so... Okay. Um, you know, it's. I think it's a condition that we we just kind of deal with, and um, you know, our assumption on that was to basically keep it as it is. Um, I, yeah, but, I understand. I mean, it's it was I'm just, just part just, of the property, so I don't. Yeah. I don't know the history of it. I believe that was probably done when, like I said, when MnDOT came in and kind of restructured right. it, and they they probably put that in because when they lowered the road, there were bad soils, so they needed to keep the the, the house up, yep. and I think that's why it's there, and I think it's. When you look at it, it's eight by eight posts that go pretty deep. They're very short spacing. That's not a traditional, typical fence. It's not a privacy fence. It's more of a, a shoring. So. Yeah, yeah. I just bring it up because it seems like such a small parcel, a piece of the parcel to even keep. So you know, what yeah, are you going to be who, able to do? I don't with know it? who else wants it, but anyway. You know. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Is there a way to ask a question of the public hearing is closed, but if you have questions, I would encourage you to reach out to the planner for the project. Is, is, is Commission Commissioner Campbell was next. And um, well, <clears throat> so I think what you just said is sort of the beginning of my comments, which is that I want to, I, I, I know that this process may seem challenging and difficult, but we really are thankful for you taking the time to come down here and speak to us about this because you live near it, you are dealing with it, and it's it's a, a it can be a challenging conversation to have in a public body like this with many different rules that are that are difficult to follow. I think for <clears throat> your sake and for the sake of the people gathered here today, I think it's important for maybe us to clarify what our role is, which is really as a checker and balance on staff interpreting city codes, city zoning regulations, a variety of other things to make sure that they align with the comprehensive plan of the city of Minneapolis. Um, and we are in that role often faced with challenges that we cannot consider as part of our overall duties as planning commissioners. Um, things like parking, things like oftentimes shading from buildings, these kinds of things which really do impact people's lives that we are unable to take into consideration written oftentimes into city ordinance preventing us from doing so. So I just wanted to say that. With that said, I want to make a motion to approve staff recommendation on this project because I do believe that it has met the goals of the City of Minneapolis Comprehensive Plan, um, that we you know there are a couple of outstanding items that I know are of importance to some of our residents that I think can probably be handled in a conversation with the owner and the developer, which I encourage both parties to do, um, and, and generally um, am supportive of, of the project. Thank you, Commissioner Campbell. Um, we have a motion and a second. Uh, is there any discussion? Seeing none, I'll ask the clerk to please call the roll. Commissioner Alper. Aye. Commissioner Baxley. Aye. Commissioner Campbell. Aye. Commissioner Conley. Aye. Commissioner Ford. Aye. Commissioner Koski. Aye. Commissioner Marwa. Aye. Chair Olson. Aye. And, and Meyer. <laughs> Commissioner Aye. Meyer. <laughs> That's nine yeas and zero nays. Thank you. All right, that motion passes. Um, so we are done with item number four. Our next item is item number six, 2426 Inglewood Ave, and staff is Mayling Smith. Good evening, Chair Olson and Commissioners. My name is Mayling Smith, and I will be presenting 2426 Inglewood Avenue. Um, this is located in Ward 5 in the Harrison neighborhood, and it is across from Bassett's Creek Park and also Freyn Mill and the Utapils site. Um, this is, these are some pictures of the existing site. Right now it is vacant. It is located in the R2 multiple family district, as well as the Shoreland Overlay District and the Interior 2 Built Form Overlay District. The proposal is for two separate structures, so they're each two stories in height and each contains eight units. Um, there will be seven enclosed parking spaces on the site 
as well as 48 bike parking spaces. Um, you may, may remember this from the Committee of the Whole uh, meeting in November. Um, this, is, uh, this requires rezoning from R2B to R3, also a conditional use permit for a planned unit development. They have proposed about 16, uh, or exactly 16 um, points worth of amenities. A variance to allow development on a steep slope, site plan review, and a plat which is, allowed, is required for all planned unit developments. So here is a picture of the site plan. Um, as you can see, there are the two separate buildings, one fronting on Inglewood and one fronting on Thomas. Um, each building would be two stories with a mezzanine, which does not count as an additional story per our zoning code. And here's a rendering of the structure. Um, yeah, as you can see, there's frontage on both of the public streets. The enclosed parking area would be fronting on the Thomas side. And our recommendation is to approve all applications um, with very minor changes, but mostly making sure that they do submit a lighting plan and enclose any mechanical equipment that ends up on the site plan um, and to comply with their planning and development amenities. And I'm here to stand for any questions. Thanks. Thank you, Mei-Ling. Any questions for staff? I'm not seeing any. Thank you. So we will open the public hearing and invite the applicant forward if you would like to say anything about the project. Hi. Any question? My name is Ben Vinzant. I am the developer and the applicant of the process, of the project. Um, yeah, here for any questions. It's been a unique, very unique site. Uh, so thank you, Mei Ling. <laughs> it's been a lot of work. I think uh, Jessica and Christian have done a wonderful job designing it to really fit into the neighborhood. And I'll let Jessica take it from here. Yeah, I just wanted to touch on a few things that we did since we came to see you during the Committee of the Whole meeting to help make it compliant. Um, we did sort of shift the entrance to the below grade parking to help bury the building a little more, and we lowered the height of that building so that we would comply with the height restrictions. Um, and we separated the two buildings, made them into two separate structures. Previously, we had connected as a single unit so that now we comply with the planned unit development. Um, but if you have any other questions for me, let me know. Thank you. Any questions for the developer? Not right now, thank you. All right, if there's anyone else here who would like to speak on this item, you can come forward, state your name and address for the record, and proceed with your comments. Hi, my name's Mark Fox. Uh, from I live at 320 Thomas Avenue North, so I would be the only other property sharing the one block of Thomas Avenue. Um, I've been living there for 13 years, so I've seen the neighborhood change from the Glenwood Inglewood Water Factory to abandoned everything to um, now the Udapils Brewery and design firms and construction companies and uh, auto center that's across the street. But basically, my concern is I just, I don't understand why we need to rezone this property um, from R2 to R3. The entire block is R2. There is no other high density on this block. My biggest concern is safety on that street. This is a beautiful picture. Christian makes beautiful things. Um, it actually matches the design of my house. It's great. Um, however, I don't see any cars in front of this, which if you've been there when the brewery is open, that street, the street of Thomas isn't wide enough for two-way traffic and parking. And that street is also in a really unique spot between Bass Creek Park and Theoworth Park. And there are two, the two major bike lanes, the bike paths from the lakes and downtown. Uh, they both go to Theoworth Park, and the street is actually the bike trail. So I don't know how seven parking spots for 16 units is going to, uh, it's, it's already unsafe for bikers as is. We've already lost the side of our car just from the brewery. Uh, traffic, which is pretty much constant at this point. And in the summer, they're doing 3,000 person concerts in the parking lot now. So um, basically, it's safety 
and it's the street just can't handle R3. It's just not zoned, it, it wasn't built for it. So, thank, thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? Yeah, you can come forward. Thank you so much. Um, I appreciate your time today, commissioners. I do actually, um, while this is a rendering, um, I do actually have video that was taken on the street this past Thursday, uh, April 6th at five o'clock for when the brewery was open for normal business hours. And I, if you would be open to it, I would love to show you that video just to give you a sense of the current traffic um, for the residents and the visitors. Um, I do have some public safety concerns for this particular area. It is a very unique residential area. It is a small residential pocket that is sandwiched between these two parks that visitors enjoy all year round. There is um, the two major city bike paths that um, as we know, are actually on the street itself. Um, there are currently uh, city leagues that play in that uh, three um, baseball field diamond uh, about four days a week, so there's a ton of traffic from that. There's traffic from the brewery. Um, so my concern is for pedestrian and biking traffic and people walking to their cars from the local businesses. So I worry that if, um, we have all this additional traffic that there is no parking for the current residents as we're currently, we're already over capacity and that it deters people from visiting the businesses in the parks. Um, there are no sidewalks. The street is very narrow and we're currently over capacity. So unless the applicant, um, you know, can show that they have concern for the current residents and businesses and are planning for parking um, that would accommodate all of the residents, I don't see how that would support it. Um, there is the shore overlay. Um, it is on a steep slope towards the creek, so water man management concerns in the future could come up. Um, so I just believe that there is a reason why it's zoned as R2, and it could certainly stay as R2, and I'm not against that you know, being the case. But if I may, is that okay if I just show a video? I mean, yeah, is that all right? Yeah. It is um, like 16 seconds. So you all can see that's the property there. And then there are cars on either side of the street with people walking to their cars. Um, and there's no room for two cars to go by side by side. They often have to wait for a series of cars to pass before, um, before they can go through. And these cars on the right side of the screen are actually currently parked in front of the bike uh, path entrance along the park. So bikers do have to bike around the parked cars. They're parked illegally. Um, and so that is the current amount of traffic, just on a regular Thursday night at 5 o'clock, not even a weekend. So thank you thank for your time. You. Is there anyone else here who would like to speak on this item? If so, come forward now. State your name and address for the record, please. Hi, my name is Allison Madsen. Um, I own 2424 and 2422, which would be the duplex that it will be just to the east. Um, I've owned it for about five years. Before that, my parents owned it for about 45 years. So we were part of the original people that came in there. Um, as they've said, it's a very unique place. It's very nature. Uh, we, my tenants and I refer to it as the town, or as the tree house, because we're up in the trees and we overlook the park, and that's, uh, looking at that rendering, I'm afraid we're gonna lose a lot of that feel to the neighborhood. Um, I'm also concerned about the parking and the traffic that's coming by. We've got, as you could see, a lot of parking or issues already. Um, so that's, that's my, those are my concerns, is that it was, if it was, if it was one level, that might be one thing, but the fact is it's gonna come up all the way up and uh, that's gonna change the feel of the neighborhood completely. So I thank you for your time and your consideration. Thank you. Is there anyone else here who would like to speak? Hi, I'm Travis Segadal. I own a property at 2511 Glenwood Avenue. It's currently a rental property, but um, the alley dead ends right behind us, behind the property, I don't know much about the plans, that, um, how high it really is, if it's, people would be looking into the backyards or not from up high. So I can't really tell from the picture. Um, I like that the entrance is down there, but obviously with their point too of the traffic, it's really, it is really intense down there. And I'm curious what the backyard is gonna be like, like if they are gonna come all the way to the alley and do some kind of support there so that it doesn't erode. Um, 
that's kind of my main concerns. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Last call? All right. I will close the public hearing then. Oh, Commissioner Ford. Thank you. I would like to hear, uh, I mean, this, the issue of the park, of the parking, or the, the actually the transportation in that area uh, does sound um, complex, if nothing else. I'm wondering what the, if the developer or the staff have any response to what we just heard. I guess I'm asking the developer, really. <laughs> you know, like this is a really interesting site, and as they've described, there's a lot happening here. And we've gone to, you know, quite a bit of lengths to try to accommodate, you know, really make this a very bike-friendly development. There's a bike room as part of the plans. There's storage lockers for skis. I mean, we're really encouraging this as an active place for people to live who might not want to have cars. Um, there is no actual parking requirement um, for this building, so even just even putting in the parking was, you know, something the developer felt was important just to help with the neighborhood and to help alleviate some of this. Um, and yeah, I, I actually live like just up the road from this. I'm well aware of the Unipil's traffic and the concert I can hear from my house. So. I just, I think, you know, all of those issues with the bike paths and Utapels, you know, we've done work on the site plan to, cre to create pathways and walkways and even like other street access from further up Inglewood for residents to park further up the street and then cut into our site and go to their units. So I just, I, I think, you know, we are definitely trying our best to make it a welcome addition to the neighborhood. Um, is there other points that? Hi, I'm Christian Dean, uh, principal architect on the project. We had a neighborhood meeting with the neighborhood and, and a couple of the concerns were um, safety. And this is just coming from a neighbor saying that there's you know, crime, uh, drug use on that site. While it's you know, nature and is possibly pretty looking, um, we think bringing eyes on the street in this area will, be, will help crime and safety in the area. We've got people living there. We've got four townhomes looking over the park. Um, so, I mean, we understand there's a lot of parking. Utapils is, you know, obviously a big player and all that. Um, we've been going to the site for years, and we generally can park there during the day, find a spot, park right on Inglewood. Um, the houses on Inglewood to the east are sort of unique. I mean, they're, they're backs of homes looking over the park. So it doesn't feel really neighborhoodly. So I think what we're doing is bringing doors on the street, bringing people. And um, again, as Jessica mentioned, we hope this caters to a different sort of demographic, a lifestyle that you know appreciates being near theater worth, skiing, biking. I mean, we thought being near the bike trails was a big amenity for us, and so um, we're trying to profile this project as sort of an alternative lifestyle. People who like to bike, ski, and bring people to this area, and we love this sort of ex-urban um, site. And so we've sort of pulled inspiration from the industrial buildings nearby. That's why you see the sawtooth roof and sort of metal paneling. So. We thought this was a great example of a, um, sort of some density on this site. It's a big site. It's very awkward in terms of the slope. And to the answer the question about what the back looks like, it's really meant to be like a cloistered space for the, the residents. We have stormwater retention ponds. So we're really dealing with stormwater. It's all been approved by the city engineers. So we're really going to improve erosion and stormwater as well. So that's our hope. We're improving the site and hopefully improving some level of safety. Maybe it's you know, the bike and car thing. We understand that. but. There's going to be people living here and hopefully makes the site more safe. Thank you. Um, okay, I think we've got Campbell, Elper, Ford, and Koski. In, oh, you know, okay, Campbell first, you want to go? Okay. Sure, I just want to, this is maybe more procedural than anything else, but one of my biggest pet peeves is when we have developers that come in and ask us to design and problem solve from the dais. And I just remember this coming before the, the Committee of the Whole, um, it's been m mentioned here multiple different times how challenging this site is, and I just want to thank you for really thoughtfully coming to the Planning Commission with changes to the design that um, more seamlessly fit in with the neighborhood, but also are easier to fit in with our city code. And I think this is a really great example of a design team coming in front of this body, taking feedback that 
we had given to you and implementing it in a way that I think uh, does the site justice. So thanks to the to the development and design team for, for doing that. Alper, you wanna go ahead? Yeah, thanks. So I hear your, uh, I'm hearing concerns about people driving to Utapils and I, I, I feel it's important to say that one of the biggest uh, reasons for why people are dying on our roads today is because of things like drinking and driving. And so um, I think that's really, I just wanna put that out there that it's concerning to me um, to hear all about this car traffic here at this site. Um, and also this is not, um, I, I really wanna validate your concerns about safety um, and safety, physical safety on our roads. Um, and I would hope, this is a question for staff, I'm wondering how can we connect the dots between these planning projects and people at Public Works, staff at Public Works, so that they know about these projects going in, or do we? what is our process, so that we can do things like um, uh, eliminate parking on one side of the street, or you know, ensure that we have the proper signage up so that the bike path isn't blocked. Thanks. Commissioner Albert, thanks for the question. Um, this is going through our traditional preliminary development review process, so Public Works is aware of the project. Um, I know that Public Works has a, has a few programs like the Sidewalk Gap program um, where I don't think this is actually programmed into it, but I could, I could just bring it up, say this might be a good candidate for that program um, if, if they're not tracking that already. Um, but this, you know, we also have recently changed our travel demand management plan. Um, we don't require that for this level of a project at 16 dwelling units. So if it were like a larger development, it would trigger a really intense review from traffic and planning to make sure that they were integrating all sorts of pedestrian safety um, things. But this, this level does not trigger that. So um, I'm not sure if there's anything else I would want to add. I would defer to... Ms. Dvorak, if she has any anything else to add. Hillary. Oh. Do you have, that's okay. She might, she probably doesn't have anything else to add, so. Yeah, I appreciate that response. I think what I'd love to see is a, like a greater tie between the planning commission decisions and, yeah. you know, making sure that there's somebody, like a, a human behind um, these, you know, direct connection and public works or, you know, whatever the, the right um, piece of the city puzzle is so that we can make sure that these, these projects are happening in tandem with our city goals and plans. Thanks. I, have, I apologize, uh, Chair Olson, Commissioner Alper. I was actually emailing with Public Works about sidewalk gaps as it pertains to Upper Harbor Terminal and the new ION development at 201 West Broadway. And I added Inglewood to the list, and I was just forwarding it to Mei Ling saying, do you want to join me? So I apologize, <laughs> but I was on topic, just not <laughs> with you all. So She's I'm going to get a meeting it. with Public Works to talk about sidewalk gaps so we can more, um, so we can better inform you when these questions come up. But this is something that's starting to pop up in a few developments that are current and active and coming tonight, obviously, is one of them, and then um, some future developments. Um, so it's on the radar. All right, Commissioner Koski. Thank you, Chair. Uh, and I'm just actually, a few of you commissioners have already uh, talked about what I was gonna ask, and so I'm just gonna emphasize this. Uh, first of all, I wasn't here in November, so I can't really speak to you being here, um, coming to us before, but I am grateful for you making some changes and adjustments, so I appreciate that. And then also to the community members that are here uh, to speak, especially about the safety issues, and I hear that. And so that was kind of where I was going with my questions is, you know, in the rendering here, we can see, uh, we can see that there's cross, you know, there's some pathways for uh, pedestrians to walk across safely, and that's a rendering. And I am just, that was kind of my question is, is this part of the overall plan that public works? So I think what I'm hearing from everybody is that um, that work has not been done, but we still need to be making those connections. So I really want to urge us that when we are planning these types of um, developments and specifically these in areas where we have you know high traffic where this is pedestrian bike residents I mean, I'm hearing you say that you know these bikers can't even get to the bike path and so it's really important that we have uh, it's accessible and you know this is a 
beautiful picture because we can see it wide open and we can see how we could safely get across the street here. But um, the reality is I, I believe that those crosswalks probably don't exist today. And so how are we going to make sure that they do? So uh, I will continue to follow up, but I just want to encourage us to make sure that we are connecting those dots and making sure that just a rendering isn't what just actually appears, but there is a whole nother department, Public Works, that needs to be part of this uh, process too. So thank you. Commissioner Campbell, then Commissioner Baxley. I just wanted to pile onto that and just maybe be a little bit more direct in that if we as a city are going to prioritize density and promote the comprehensive 2040 plan, I think there definitely needs to be a permanent link between the planning teams and the public works teams because as the as neighborhoods get more dense these types of issues are going to continue to bubble up and i don't think it is a good use of staff time of the public's time or our time to consider these types of questions if we don't have that direct link so i would urge directors across these departments to find ways that we could have i don't know if it's a permanent participation of public works at these meetings or some formal way for us to better connect the dots here because I get that we don't we don't have purview over what Public Works decides to do at this location, but we're the ones on the dais taking questions from the public. And so if we can have a more formal connection between the two departments, I think it's in the best interest of everybody as we move forward with this. Thank you. I mean, the only thing I would say is that any development of four or more units that comes before Planning Commission also goes through this, well, every new development goes through Public Works Review for some kind of approval before building permits are issued. So all of the various departments of Public Works, sidewalks, water, sewer, traffic, you name it, they've all, they all have eyes on these plans as they're going through. And we send them through before Planning Commission so we have their initial feedback and then they don't get final approval until after Planning Commission in case staff or the Planning Commission adds conditions that would impact those final plans. And so after the action is taken from Planning Commission and Council if needed, that's when the applicants come back and then finalize their plans with Public Works. So there, there is a connection between the two departments. It, it's just some, it's, we're kind of mid-process right now, if you will, in the public works process because planning commission comes in in the middle and that's designed specifically so we don't approve something, so they don't, so the city plans don't get approved before planning commission does something. And so that's, there's our checks and balances between the two, but I will talk uh, more with Paul Miller, who is our primary point of contact for public works on PDR and just ask him we can have some brainstorming about different possibilities or ideas. I don't know about bringing them to, to planning commission um, <laughs> every week. I don't, I don't know if they would go for that, but we can definitely have some conversations about other ways to, to, to uh, I tie think them together. In the interest of good governance and people who come here to share concerns about the ways that these developments are impacting their lives. I think that these, this is a really good example of there being an issue that is outside of our purview, but we're the ones hearing it. And I, I have to think there's a better way for us to connect the people who can address the questions being raised by the public with the plans that we're tasked with approving. And so maybe it's even just a blurb in the staff report that that addresses some of the concerns that are raised. I, I don't want to do I mean, this isn't the planning staff's job either. So I'm not sure what the answer is. But I would like it to be more efficient for people who come here to get, and frankly, for our time to be better used as we have inputs that are public works related because public works dramatically impacts the way that we're interacting with the public. And right now we don't have any voice to respond with. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Commissioner. Um, I think um, you know it's, it's it is an interesting discussion. I think we're all uh, about safety, but as our city grows, you know, we've been talking about some of our solely single-family neighborhoods and expanding uses and types in there, trying to get um, things beyond residential. So here's a sort of the flip of that: um, a neighborhood that's kind of growing to meet uh, a success of something kind of across the street. And so I, I think it feels 
really appropriate and uh, appreciate the solution. If you, uh, you know, on the site section, there's some really helpful drawings in the back that show the relationship of the public alley, this building in section, that you, in fact, you can see over top of the roof of this. Um, so I, I think I would encourage you to take a look at that and understand exactly how the building situates on site. As I look at that, though, um, I do, there's a pretty big retaining wall, uh, I think, that's kind of going in there that sort of is tucked into a pretty natural area there. And I don't remember what our requirements are as, build, as code. If I've got a big drop, do I have to protect that drop from somebody kind of even coming through the woods? So I, I, let's take a look at that and make sure that we haven't created a, um, a precarious situation for somebody wandering through the woods to drop off there. But otherwise, um, I think it's lovely and I, I appreciate the um, understanding of the history across the street and, and sort of meeting that with this project. So thank you. Uh, Commissioner Ford. Back to the, the issue of the process that was just raised earlier. Um, the, I think the, the coordination, the, the um, issue of having the uh, these projects reviewed by the, by the public work staff is long standing. But I, unless I'm mistaken, I don't think there's a public process involved in that, is there? I think it's the, it's, a, it's the staff that reviews it for engineering issues and so forth. There's no opportunity for the kinds of concerns we've heard today to be raised. Uh, with the staff. So I think there, there is a need for some improvement with this process. Thank you, Commissioner Ford. Um, I'm not seeing anyone else. Um, I'll just say, you know, we heard about rezonings, um, parking, we heard about views, and um, a lot of these things are, the rezoning is simply to make it in compliance with the already adopted comprehensive plan. Um, we don't require any parking, um, and you know, I would argue that maybe the commercial uses across the street are more of the concern for parking, and I believe the park versus, you know, 16 residential use units um, with some parking um, underground, and we don't, we also don't, I hope that um, as much of your views are maintained, but we don't protect there's no protection for views. Um, it must be lovely, though, to have a, I have an open field across from my house right now, and I'm waiting for it to be developed, so <laughs> I understand. Um, so if there's no one else, I will make a motion to adopt staff recommendation. Second. All right. Is there any discussion? All right. Seeing none, I'll ask the clerk to please call the roll. Commissioner Alper. Aye. Baxley. Aye. Campbell. Aye. Conley. Aye. Ford. Aye. Koski. Aye. Marwa. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Chair Olson. Aye. That's nine yeas and zero nays. All right, that motion passes, and we will move on to our last item for the evening, which is item number 10, 13746. Street West, uh, and staff is Aaron Hanauer. Good afternoon, Chair and Commissioners. So the project site located between 13746 Street West is located between Lindell Avenue South and Nicollet Avenue. Southeast corner of Pillsbury Avenue and 46th Street West, there's currently a one-story building located closer to the alley. The applications before you for this four-unit development is to rezone from R1A to R3 site and site plan review. There's no variances being requested for this proposal. And two bedrooms would be in each unit. Vehicle access would be off the alley for three off-street parking spaces. 
A few public comments have been submitted today, and I pass those on to you for this meeting. Uh, so CPED is recommending approval of both applications. The rezoning from R1A to R3 is consistent with the applicable policies of the comprehensive plan. That current built form guidance is R3, or corridor three, excuse me, and this R3 zoning is in line with that built form guidance. The land use rezoning study, which will likely be in front of you at the next planning commission meeting, the recommended zoning district is UN3. And just like the built form guidance, it's not just this property, it's, it's those properties all along 46th Street West. And once again, that R3 recommend or requested zoning is in line with that UN3 zoning of the land use rezoning study. And, and why, why the R3, or why the UN3, R3, and the corridor three guidance for 46th Street is typically applied for areas that are well served by mass transit, a transit corridor, and that is the case in this situation to allow for a, a little more dense, density than what R1 or R2B zoning would allow. The, this project, if it came it was brought to us two months from now, and the land use rezoning study goes forward. The only application would, that would be needed is ad, an admin site plan review. So I just wanted to point that out that the applicant wanted to get a head start or to, to get going on the development um, a couple months before, before that. So the, that, was, that was brought up as an, as an idea or suggestion, but, but they, they saw it as important to go forward now to hopefully make progress on the, on the development. So I'm happy to answer questions you may have. Thank you, Erin. Any questions for Seth? I don't see any, thank you. Oh, Commissioner Marwa. Sorry, Erin, I have a quick question. So if this had been brought to us after next week, it would have been approved, it could be approved as of right? There's, I would say two months from now, there's uh, some, it gets complicated with the Rezoning that, um, I would say two months from now. Okay, and so it if this was brought approved. to us in two months from now, it would be approved as of right. And you wouldn't even see the project you because it would be done to administratively. Yep, thank you. All right, I don't see any more questions. So I will open the public hearing, and if the applicant is here and would like to come forward, you can um, do so now. Good evening, uh, Damaris Hollingsworth, the architect for the project, representing the uh, developer as well. I don't really have much to add, just to make a mention that uh, two years ago we came to this, uh, not this board, but a similar board with a very different project for the same property. It was a three-story, five units, uh, the neighborhood was really strongly against it. Uh, we, then the former owner sold the property to this new developer who really did everything that we have heard from community reduce the scale, reduce the number of units, um, and remove the balconies overseeing the neighbors. Um, that was a big deal for the neighborhood at the time. So I'm here for questions, if there's any for me um, it, from, from, the, from the board. Thank you. Commissioners, any questions for the applicant? Um, I'm not seeing any right now, thank you. All right, if there's anyone else here who would like to speak, you can come forward, state your name and address for the record. Yes, thank you. My name is Kurt Anderson. I'm at uh, 4618 Pillsbury, a half block south of this development. Uh, Madam Chair, you called for opposition. Actually, I'm standing to uh, express my qualified support. Uh, I think I can, I can only speak for myself. I know my neighbors well. We love welcoming new people on the block. Um, we are very interested in this project. We appreciate the fact that compared to some prior pro uh, proposals that's appropriately scaled. I do want to raise a few issues about it though and uh, uh, as pointed out some of those are going to be outside the box um, but I want to raise them nevertheless. Uh, first and uh, I'm aware of the time also right. so I'm <laughs> if I sound like a tobacco auctioneer that's probably why all right. <laughs> so um, first of all I appreciate the fact the roof line the, the roof line requirement kind of matches the residences uh, there. Parking, uh, again, public works, right? But uh, you do have an issue there. The, there is a, a, a parking lane across the street that has a single family residence. If that can be moved to this side, these new 
Neighbors of ours will not have to cross a busy street, or their visitors will not have to cross a busy street. Um, those are two minor points. Major point, uh, way out of the box, but I want to uh, issue a challenge. I've, I'm very familiar with Minneapolis 2040. I've written my own long critique of it. I really think that uh, the plan is kind of punting away the question of social equity, the, the rhetoric. It, it doesn't answer the rhetoric about, um, about redlining and about covenants. Are we really building social equity through property ownership here? I would ask the commission and our elected officials to, uh, I would challenge them to look for ways to tie this to home ownership, to building wealth and building social equity through property ownership. I realize that is way beyond your assignment here. Uh, you're, the staff person has uh, pointed that out to me. <laughs> I humbly acknowledge that. But I would, ask the court, I would ask you to very carefully consider tying, figuring out ways to tie this to home ownership and to build this idea of social equity uh, and wealth building through home ownership. It's a big challenge. I realize it's hard to hand it to you right here in this context, but I would like to see that happen. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anyone else here who would like to speak on this item? You can come forward whenever. Thank you, Commissioner. My name is Karen Costello. I'm at um, 4611 Pillsbury Avenue. Um, and I agree um, with, the, with the comments that were submitted by Kurt M. Anderson to this panel. Uh, and I would like to promote some home ownership, upward mobility, and actually kind of meeting some of the social disparities that, that we have. And um, as well, 46th is a very busy street. And I, I would like to see um, you know, maybe the, par the parking across the street, maybe um, brought from the uh, even side to the odd side, um, or even on Pillsbury Avenue, perhaps some you know just dedicated parking for the residents that, that live there, and just um, a, a little bit more consideration for, for just that extremely um, busy 46th Street that it is on, and for four units like, is really pretty much, I think, actually maximum for for that space. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Aaron Voigt. I live at 4542 Pillsbury Avenue South. I, my wife and I have been there for 34 years. I will have an amazing view of this property because I have a huge bay window, probably the size of two of those, that looks right at the property. I have some First, from, compared to the first built building that was going to go up, this looks like a house. That was a building. So I am very pleased to see this um, house instead of a giant building with no balconies or anything like that. I do have a concern that there is four very mature um, maple trees on the boulevard. And I, have, I am a construction worker myself. I'm a union construction worker. Um, and I know oftentimes it's easier for you to knock down the boulevard trees and so that it's easier for you to build your building in a timely fashion. But for the rest of us, uh, we would probably prefer to look at those four mature trees instead of some twigs that are going to all be in a nursing home by the time they're as big as they are now. So I hope that I don't see any of the trees on this drawing, so I, I hope that they're not being removed. Um, I, I do another issue, too, is like, you know, it, uh, Washburn High School is right there, and so there's a crosswalk on Nicollet, and then there's a stop sign on Grand Avenue. So if you're a high school kid, I had three kids that went through Washburn, there's nowhere to cross here. So as far as like, uh, you know, some more adding some crosswalks, this would be, a, plus it's a 30 mile an hour road, not a 20 like the rest of the city. So you got a faster speeds, nowhere to cross. There's kids there always trying to dodge across the street. Um, and I am worried too, is this like as far as like construction that how many cars will be parked, construction trucks and whatnot that will be, you know, um, parked along in the hours of construction. Um, and then will the property, since is this a rental building? So will it, who will maintain the property? I mean, is it, is it? Matthew and Jeff Greger, the developers. And so that's who does the mowing and the take land, okay. All right. 
Um, thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else here who would like to speak on this item? All right. Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Uh, Commissioner Campbell. I appreciate everyone being here today speaking on this topic. I think this, to the to um, the point at the top, this is a relatively standard project, and I, I uh, make a motion to approve staff recommendation. We have a motion. Is there a second? Commissioner Marwa has a second. Okay. Um, is there any discussion? Commissioner Conley? Um, no real discussion. I uh, was going to second if no one else did, but just um, um, uh, I wanted to ask about those trees sure. because there are tree canopy goals, um, both with Hennepin County and the city of Minneapolis, and I'm uh, a firm believer that trees are infrastructure. So I was wondering if um, the developer could speak to those mature trees that were there, that are there, but not in the drawing. Chair and Commissioner, yes, the the trees are slated to stay. There's a review. There's the landscape plan that's submitted where, where you'll see them in, in, in place. And that would involve um, review by our park board colleagues. So the, the trees in this um, unforeseen circumstance are slated to stay. Thank you. And just going to um, point out that this is another good example of the public works partnership that we could potentially have. I would put a couple of kids through Washburn myself, so I'm very familiar with the area, and it is uh, quite the road to cross. So um, I certainly see with these projects that we're tasked with approving the parallels with needing um, to have support from public works. So thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Conley. Any one else? Just one Commissioner time. Baxley? I, I'm, I'm, it's great that trees are staying. I think, I wonder if they're um, it, it does, every time we do this, a chance for us to kind of look at the rules around how they're protected during construction. And I think, you know, anything we can do to make sure it's not a lot of lay down area, it's a pretty tight site for construction, that we do everything we can uh, to preserve that infrastructure for sure. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Commissioner Koski. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I just want to say thank you to the community members and the developer for being here. Uh, and specifically, I understand the comments about uh, trying to increase our home ownership uh, amounts here in the city of Minneapolis and just want to make a quick comment. Yes, outside of our purview here, but also agree that, you know, continuing to make sure that we're uh, fostering those opportunities as much as we can is very important. So just I know we'll take that conversation offline, though, too. Thank you. All right, I'm not seeing anyone else, so I will ask the clerk to please call the roll. Commissioner Alper. Aye. Axley. Aye. Campbell. Aye. Conley. Aye. Ford. Aye. Koski. Aye. Marwa. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Chair Olson. Aye. That's nine yeas and zero nays. All right, that motion passes. That was our last item for this evening. Are there any announcements from staff? Okay, uh, just a few things. Um, I don't know if this was mentioned at the last uh, Planning Commission meeting, but 2725 University Avenue was appealed that will be going to biz um, next Tuesday the 18th. So I will let you know what happens um, after that. Hillary, is that the the short one, Chinese restaurant one. Yeah. Yes, yeah. That, that's the the I think the biggest. Well, the the main application was the variance of minimum height. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. um, we do have the retreat for CPC coming up on the twenty seventh. Thank you to everyone who has sent uh, retreat agenda items to uh, Commissioner Olson. Her and I have met and discussed that. She has forwarded to me the list. I'm working, going to be working on an agenda tomorrow. Um, and I will discuss that with her once um, I've gotten that completed. Um, we do have Committee of the Whole this Thursday. We have one project, and then the land use rezoning team will be back to talk to you in advance. And then the big one is on the 24th at Planning Commission is the land use rezoning team. Um, I know Commissioner Chair Olson is not going to be able to be there, but I'm hopeful that everybody else will be able to attend um, I will just preface uh, the next two public hearings that we have on April 24th, 
And I'm sorry, I can't see up close without these and I can't see you guys with them on, so I don't know. <laughs> I have to figure this out. Um, and then on May 8th, we have a very long agenda and we have some um, challenging items coming up on that agenda. And so I just want to encourage all of you to please bring something to drink, like water in a sealed bottle um, or whatnot, and then maybe a snack or something, because I, I do think that the next two planning commission meetings, we could be here mm -hmm. well past this time. So, and it's almost six tonight. So I just want to let everyone know, we appreciate you staying. We want to keep you upright and awake and alert. So yeah. we could serve pizza. I can talk to Meg about that. <laughs> I don't know if we have to fill the audience with pizza or not. Um, uh, so th those are my only announcements, but just keep that in the back of your minds that the next, the 24th and the 8th could turn out to be quite long okay. of public hearings. So please be prepared. Thank you for the warning. Um, You're welcome. Commissioner Meyer, did you have something before we adjourn? Yeah, I just um, wanted to add to the agenda for the retreat, uh, the travel demand management uh, plans and yes. some of the, the details around that, if you didn't already have that. We got it on, on the list. list. All right. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> it's on the list. Yep. All right. Anything else from the commissioners? Oh. Uh, we are going to schedule it for two hours, so 4.30 to 6.30. Okay. okay. All right. Anything else? If not, and without objection, I'll declare this meeting adjourned. Our next meeting will be Monday, April 24th, and our next Committee of the Whole is this Thursday, April 13th. Thank you, everybody.